I felt that the coaching were not really needed. So only after one or two days of you know the GS coaching and all, I came out and then did my own self preparation. So I got uh, you know section officer audit. Then I gave CPF examination. Got it to assistant commandant. Then also there was a management training program of uh, PSU called MSTC. Cleared that. So having done these three exams, so gave me confidence that uh, you can clear exams and it's like a warm up for the actual UPSC. One important part of civil services was going amongst people, you know, trying to serve them. Uh, I was in the IRS, a very great service, directly contributing the income of India. But I was always an animal lover. Right. And uh, I come from a community where people eat meat. So in my engineering, I came across a research which talked about tissue culture basically. So I was fascinated that no animals need to be killed and you can enjoy your meat. Right. So that was the you know seed which germinated later on. UPSC toys and joined Indian Revenue Services in 2010. He had a great career ahead of him and was enjoying his work. But while UPSC was his dream, his passion was animal love. He wanted to be the voice of voiceless. So after six years of services, he decided and quit IRS to become an entrepreneur. He started Good Dot, India's first ever plant based leading meat manufacturer. So today we are meeting Mr. Abhishek Semha, an IRS officer turned entrepreneur. So without wasting any time, let's go straight to him. So sir, I'll obviously come to your uh, product, Good Dot. Yeah. But before that, I wanted to talk to you about your UPSC and its journey. Yes. So uh, when did you decide to appear for UPSC? So for me, uh, I think UPSC coming from Bihar was a natural choice. You know, having seen some of the family members being in UPSC, right. getting the kind of respect, the getting the kind of you know work profile, I think that was quite fascinating. My father himself was a government central government employee, so he was a additional commissioner in ESI. So I had seen so all the while there was a lot of comfort around government service, but I was not sure whether I'll eventually go there or not. But after completing my engineering, when my brother went to US to do his PhD in protein chemistry. That time I said that, okay, then I should be staying back in India. Right. And again, the dream of uh, clearing civil services came back and you said, okay, let me do this. So that was the reason. Yeah. yeah and uh, you cleared it twice. Right? Yes, uh, two times. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, how how was the preparation? Did you go to Delhi or you did uh, self-study only? So yes, uh, I did go to Delhi uh, and then took the usual coaching. But then again, I felt that the coaching were not really needed. So only after one or two days of, you know, the GS coaching and all, I came out and then did my own self-preparation. Except sociology, which I took, there were two options at that time. So sociology, I attended the class, but then most of the studies was done by people personally. And I think uh, last time when we talked, you said ki you gave some other exams also and yeah. you cleared in that too. But that was part of your UPSC preparation. Yes. Yes. So what exams you gave? So exams, uh, I would uh, you know recommend a lot of youngsters who are preparing for civil services to have uh, alternate career options and also give other exams wherever your eligibility permits. For example, I gained SSC, so I got uh, you know section officer audit. Then I gave CPF examination, got it to assistant commandant. Then also there was a management training program of uh, PSU called MSTC. Cleared that. So having done these three exams, so gave me confidence that uh, you can clear exams mm -hmm. and it's like a warm up for the actual UPSC. So mm -hmm. for me, that was the most important thing. Yeah. So I think most of the time you were thinking about any service, right? And yes. now now you are an entrepreneur. So how has this transition, you know, came to you? Yes. Yeah, so for me, uh, you know, I take work life as an extension or rather big part of your larger life. Most of your waking hours you spend while working, right? So it has to carry some meaning. When we start out, what we look for is security. We look for, you know, uh, taking care of your expenses. But once you're able to do that, then I think the larger construct of life comes about. For me, you know, uh, one important part of civil services was going amongst people, you know, trying to serve them. Uh, I was in the IRS, a very great service, directly contributing the income of India. But I was always an animal lover. Right. And uh, I come from a community where people eat meat. Uh -huh. So in my engineering, I came across a research which talked about tissue culture based meat. Uh -huh. 
So I was fascinated that no animals need to be killed and you can enjoy your meat. Right. So that was the you know seed which germinated later on. Uh, I said that okay, nothing like this is happening in India. So if you have to save animals while maintaining people's desire for eating meat, eating meat, right? I think we need to set up something. So we formed a team and we started working on the project. But eventually, we felt that you know this was my dream. Right. The fire, what I was carrying, may not necessarily be carried by others initially. So for me, it was a call whether you want to continue in your service or want to pursue a dream of helping animals. So that was the call I took and left the service. Yeah. Right, and you served only for six years, and then you quit. Yes. So 2008 was in Indian Defence Command. I got I cleared services. So for in civil services, I worked for eight years, uh, rather nine years, uh, from 2008 to 2017. But on 2016, I went on a study leave, and. Within the study leap, I uh, submitted my resignation. So my service was, uh, you know, accepted resignation or accepted from 2016. So you can say eight years I was in civil service. Yeah. You were in civil services. But was it difficult, you know, to leave a well-settled job and a, a prosperous career ahead and start something new, which is not, I think, not introduced in the country also. Yeah. It, it was totally new. So yes. how how difficult was it to, you know, leave the job? For me, it was not difficult at all because for me as I said life is more important I felt that I have to do something which really means very strongly to my heart I think uh, the credit also goes to the family for agreeing to my step they were supporting me in this step uh, I was very clear that in case what were the opportunity cost of course you have a salary you have a secure life you have a respectable career that's for sure mm-hmm. but the, if not leaving for your dream is a bigger opportunity cost because if you retire at 60 and you would have thought, what if? Hmm. So that was a reason uh, for me it was not difficult at all. Because I never looked it at from a career perspective. I never looked it at from a business perspective. Right. It was always a, a, an effort, a movement to save animals. So that uh, really was a non-issue for me. So it was not difficult for me. Yeah, it might not be difficult for you. But just now, just now you mentioned you come from Bihar. I also come from yes. Bihar. And for people like us, you know, job and especially yeah. a job in UPSC means a lot. Yeah. And to leave that, yes. it you know, you have to face so many questions from your family yeah. and all. So that's why I asked, ki, uh, how did your parents react when you uh, told them, ki, you know, I leave this and I'll, I'll start something of my own. So that. The parents, of course, were a bit concerned initially. With the first time I said, they knew all along ki, uh, you know, Abhishek was someone who would follow his own heart. Right. So, but they also knew that I'm mostly sincere. So, if I'm saying something, there is a reason behind that. So, we had a conversation, and after that, they were totally in support. So, it was not uh, an extended period of concern, just one or two days of interactions and discussions, and why I'm going to do this, and why if I don't do this, I won't be satisfied with my life. They understood it. Uh, my wife was extremely supportive, you know, from day one. She said, okay, go for it. It's, uh, you know, my job is to support you. And I know where you're coming from. So please go ahead. So it was not difficult for me. I know leaving a secure job like UPSC or civil services uh, is a big step. And you cannot do it if your family is not in sync. Right. Obviously, you need the support of your family. And obviously, you told me that you were an animal lover and you also like to eat meat. But I wanted to know... Was there any specific incident or any thought that provoked you to start Good Dog? So, it was not one specific incident. It was uh, years of struggle of leaving meat and again going back to eating meat. Mm -hmm. Because all along my childhood, I've been helping animals, feeding them, rescuing them. So, for me, uh, you know, realizing that on one hand, I'm helping animals. On the other hand, I'm consuming some other animal. Right. So, there was always a moral dilemma. I, I would leave meat for one or two years, again go back eating meat. So this struggle was continuous. Uh, finally, when, you know, as I said, the seed of a meat without animals was sowed in 2003, when I was in the final year of engineering, right. I was uh, pursuing my chemical engineering. So that was the seed which was sowed, which germinated good 10 years later while I was in service. So I think uh, that is the flow. Okay, and how did that start it? Like, you were reading about this tissue culture-based meat. So, you researched about it and then set up the factory. I wanted to know the story. 
so yes uh, so as i said uh, i kept reading about the space my brother went to do his phd in protein chemistry from united states we kept exchanging notes what's happening in the space in the us and europe and things were moving so of course my inspiration was tissue culture based meat but plant based meat which does not carry even a t- single tissue of animal 100% plant based ingredient was coming up very big in a big way in america uh-huh. so that is where you know we researched across the globe you know uh, we formed a team which went to across the globe different equipment manufacturers universities to understand the science behind this technology so it took us good 3 years to find our way to the right set of technology and the product and we innovated in our own way and we for, we had food technologists we had a chemical engineer i am a chemical engineer myself we are mm-hmm. protein chemists so we we worked on it diligently and we could crack it after 3 years of r&d yeah and would you like to uh, tell us like how this plant based meat is actually manufactured mm-hmm. like uh, what is the process basically so what we do is extrusion extrusion is application of temperature and pressure on plant based ingredient mm-hmm. so if you uh, it, while the technology is complicated the science is not very complicated um, think about you have a raw egg right mm-hmm. and uh, you put it in a boiling water what happens it will boil and it will boil and become yeah. solid what yeah. happened from liquid how did it become solid you have not added any ingredient yeah. so there only is heat. only heat yeah. heat so because of heat what happens in protein there is a process called denaturation of protein so what is denaturation of protein so proteins are linked amino there are amino acids ch- chains they are linked in specific aspect yeah. when you apply heat that changes the structure changes and that realigns so that about happens in a egg that initially the protein is linked in a particular manner on application of meat that amino acid chain links breaks up and they realign so what we do we take a dough think about a wheat flour dough dough yeah it it gets stretched in any direction but when you look at chicken hmm. it gets layered there's a layer to it it doesn't get stretched in any direction all right you cut it only in layers it's layers right. right so what we we take that protein dough we apply heat and pressure on it we break the layers and then you know put it in layers we break the amino acid linkage and put it in layers so the same protein which is getting extended in a dough in different form then breaks in a layer form okay. so that is the process of how we work okay and what are the ingredients of good dot product? so good dot we have varied ingredients we have n to 14 different raw material raw products but if you ask in terms of protein so there is soy protein there is pea protein mm-hmm. yellow peas uh, protein then we have wheat protein then we have different flours like gram flour chickpea mm. flour quinoa flour so various ingredients going to the products yeah okay and uh, i'll obviously talk about other things but first i wanted to understand ki when you are starting a business you need money yeah. so how did you raise your first investment so our first investment was raised from two uh, institutions one is uh, a fashion suitings private limited so uh, the owner of fashion suiting private limited mr PC Chhabra he's a jain right. and he believes in ahimsa so for him it was very very relevant that we are able to give a replacement ethical replacement to meat cruelty free replacement to meat right. so that was the first important investment which set up our factory then there was a us based venture capital fund called new crop capital so they also invested because they promote vegan businesses around the globe so they were also uh, the second investor so this was the first set of investors and friends and family a small rounds we did and we set up our factory factory in udaipur udaipur there are two factories one is a plant protein factory mm-hmm. and another is a spices factory so was there any uh, reason behind choosing this place for a factory setup yes i think uh, first of all it's a very beautiful city a very right. good city to yeah. live in a family was settled mm-hmm. so personal life was very sorted in the city that was one reason but from a strategic point of view there were three reasons one Uh, Udaipur is bang in the middle national highway connecting Delhi and Mumbai. Hmm. So it could is in just uh, 12 hours you can reach Delhi or you can reach Mumbai. So big markets hmm. and the national highway connecting it is we start with Udaipur. That's the middle. Second is soy which is one of our key ingredient is found in Kota or Indore which in is Indore, a, right. which is not very far off from and then right. four five hours drive from Udaipur. Hmm. So that's reason. Third our distributor RCM Central Warehouse is just one and a half hours from here in Bilwada. 
So what we do, we uh, manufacture our product, we ship entire lot into their massive warehouses and then they distribute from it. Hmm. So for these three reasons and the personal reason of being uh, comfortable with the city, I chose. Yeah. Yeah. So you just mentioned your uh, distribution through RCM. Thoda sa elaborate karenge. What is the distribution channel? How you are, you know, catering the people who... Sure. So RCM is uh, a direct selling network. Uh, if you know Amway. Uh, Amway. So, so Amway ki tarah, this is a store. Uh, but they are primarily in tier 2, tier 3 cities. Yeah. Good penetration. And uh, they have around 12,000 stores across India, which carries various products. Mm-hmm. So, Good Dot is one of the products what they carry. So, we give it to them based, and they send to their state warehouse, which takes them to the 12,000 outlets. So, that's an important channel for our, you know, sales distribution. distribution. But we also sell online on our own website, Amazon. We have started exporting to four or five countries out of India. And we are also providing protein to a lot of big players. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, for example, Barbecue Nation has recently launched mm. uh, across India our protein. We have corporate tie with Leela. We provide to JW Marriott, Ta, Tata, both yeah. kind of. Right, yeah. So, and right now, uh, do you have any competition in India? Uh, Can't think it. Yes, I think there are a lo- lot of companies which have come up in the plant protein space. So, there are a lot of companies, I would say around 8 to 10 companies which are similar in this space. But by far, we are the largest in mm. the space. And... Uh, yeah, that's okay. And one more thing, I think you know, for the ve- for vegetarian people, yeah. if you are uh, even the word uh, meat, you know that yeah, that's unko issue ho jata hai. There are many vegetarian products like mushrooms, yes. soya chaps. They are you know skeptical to consume that. Mm. So you came up with this product. It's kind of a uh, you know um, what we say, ca- ha, and a category creation yeah. kind oh. kind of a thing. Oh. So how was the response? And were there any challenge to, you know, make people understand, no, this is not meat yeah. and you should consume this because it's good for your health and it's not, you know, harming any animal also at the same point. So, yes, I think uh, the challenge initially was technological, mm-hmm. still is. Uh, like, how do you make something from vegetarian or vegan ingredients? How do you make something similar to meat? So, that's the biggest challenge. So, that we overcame and we are still in the process of continuously innovating. But the next challenge comes, how do you create the category? Now that you have the product, how do you convince meat eaters as well as vegetarians that here is the product which is good for you, healthy and you can use it. So initially we named our product as vegetarian meat. Because and then there has been, we give it a lot of thought ki why we should name vegetarian meat. Because think about peanut butter, think about soya milk. Hmm. Suppose instead of soya milk, it would have been soya liquid. Liquid. So you would not know what is the application of this white thing mm-hmm. or liquid. Shall I paint it? Shall I wash it? I don't know. So okay. that's why they say milk. Milk. Huh? Uh, same for peanut butter. You know, you have to apply on the bread, sandwiches, those kinds. Of, because the application is similar to butter. So that's why we named it a vegetarian meat. So that its application is similar to me. Mm-hmm. Taste, texture will be similar to me. But it is vegetarian. Mm-hmm. But once the awareness was created after two years, we re- renamed it as vegetarian bites. Bites, okay. Because for us, referencing to meat is the first step. Hmm. But later, we want to move away from referencing to meat once people understand what the product is. Okay. Yeah. And if you would have to tell about your consumers, are the urban population or rural population, where is your the product consumed mostly? So, again, uh, uh, online, it's the metros, hmm. uh, Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore. But offline, because of our interesting channel, I think uh, south of India, east of India, and northeast of India. In fact, Bihar is our top state. Okay. We sell the maximum. In the top 10 cities, I think uh, there are smaller cities like Samastipur, mm-hmm. which feature among the top 10 cities. Then we have in Malkangiri, Norisa. We have, uh, uh, I think, some smaller city, but we have Vizag, we have uh, Bhurneshwar also featuring in our top 10 cities. So you were listening to IRS officer turned entrepreneur, Mr. Abhishek Sinha. We'll continue this conversation in the next part and know about his company Good Talk. So stay tuned with us and for no such videos about bureaucracy and ISN IPS officer, subscribe our channel.